So when life throws you scary financial surprises, things can get pretty tough and challenging pretty fast. So, I mean, let's be honest, like who wants to deal with all these like house repairs, car troubles, other adulting that we just never thought we'd have to deal with. I don't. We're caught. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> man, who's going to take care of this? Like, oh, it's me. I have to, I have to deal with this. <laughs> what is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse-bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 47 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we are sharing Mezzo Bistro. Next, we'll talk about ways to develop an emergency fund. And finally, we'll share ways to travel better in 2023. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we're sharing about one of my new personal favorites, Mezzo Bistro. This location has been... I think it's been there forever, for, for as long as I can remember it being, it's on Rancho off of Craig. And I've always seen it driving by, never went in. I've seen, um, gotten ads like in the mail, gotten, you know, these, this offer and that. It. Never, never, ever gone in until finally, uh, recently, I went with Rodney, my husband, um, on a date night with one of, um, Fun. two of our friends. And it was, it was great. The environment was great. The food was great. Perfect for a date night because they've got like, um, it's very Italian. So they've got the dim lighting, there's twinkle lights, a lot of like greenery, real and um, fake greenery, there's outdoor seating, Um, they've got candles, and they've got a huge wine bar like when you walk in. So it's putting out all the romantic vibes there. One of the cool things that I also noticed that even though it's like set up for people to go and dine in or on the little patio area, they've got a good amount of people that order to go. Um, while we were there, we saw a lot of people, um, getting the packaged up meals to go. So it's like, cool, we can do this, you know, just on a regular weekend if we wanted to order some pasta or something. What I ordered from the menu, again, I'm kind of just not doing my traditional, usually what I order when I get Italian is like a chicken Parmesan. Mm -hmm. I ordered the chicken piccata. Have you ever had that? Oh, yes. That's lemon, right? Yes. 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 That's like one of my go-to faves. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was so delicious. Was it lemony? It was just enough lemony, okay. just enough. It was not too much. Saute chicken breast. Else, I was like, this is not, not enough lemon. So. Oh, okay. No, yeah. well, I mean, I've never, I'm, this is my yeah. first time. So <laughs> there's no frame of reference, but it was delicious. The um, chicken was cooked perfectly. The lemon was cooked in a, um, a white wine sauce with butter. Um, it had capers and it was served over angel hair pasta. Delicious, absolutely delicious. Ordered wine, of course. The meal itself was about eighteen dollars, so not bad. Okay. Um, the wine was probably about the same price, so about forty dollars for my meal alone. I think, though, what I want to do next time I go is order the pizza. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, they've got a lot of the pastas and stuff, but they've got a lot of um, pizzas that you don't see like at a traditional pizza location. So um, they've got the Neapolitan pizzas. One of the ones that I want to try is the, called the Mona Lisa. And they've got it with um, house-made sweet sausages, which I really like sausage. Mm. Goat cheese, never had it. Why not? Let's try it. (laughs) (laughs) And, of course, mozzarella and marinara. So that will be my next go-to item. Uh, My one recommendation, um, if you've never been to Mezzo before, if you're planning to go in the future, is to check out the menu in advance. Like I said, there is a lot of kind of like authentic Italian meals. They are family owned. A lot of the waiters um, and the the staff there, you could tell like they've got the accent. I don't believe it was fake, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's authentic food. So check out the menu. Try something besides spaghetti and meatballs. Try something new. Um, So next time we want to also check out, um, I saw this on the website, was that they also do trivia nights and murder mystery dinner nights. So I'm like, yeah, I need to go bring some friends and um, check out one of these days. Well, if you've got a recommendation for a restaurant for us to try, send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We're always open to new ideas. Next up, Shannon's going to share some important tips for how you can start building your emergency fund. 
So when life throws you scary financial surprises, things can get pretty tough and challenging pretty fast. So, I mean, let's be honest, like who wants to deal with all these like house repairs, car troubles, other adulting that we just never thought we'd have to deal with. I don't. We're caught. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> man, who's going to take care of this? Like, oh, it's me. I have to, I have to deal with this. <laughs> And so right now, just times are kind of tricky, like things are costing a lot more and we're already spending more than maybe we'd already budgeted. And so if something unexpected comes up, like that could really be um, a hit to your budget. And so having an emergency fund is really going to come in handy. And there are three important tips we want to share from our financial partner, Bonsai, to help you build an emergency fund. The first one is it's an emergency fund is not the same as a savings account. And so if your mindset is like, oh, something happens or breaks, I have that money to pull from the savings account. But really, you need to keep it something separate. It's not something that you're going to dip into. It's not in your monthly. It's something that you're just not going to touch and we'll only use it for emergencies. So you're not going to be spending that accidentally if it's grouped with other money, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think one of the things I like about the credit union um, too is that there's like the opportunity to have more than one savings account. So you can have your regular like future savings, but then you can also have a second emergency savings Mm -hmm. um, account that's separate. vacation fund, something totally separate Mm -hmm. that you don't really touch until it's time for that vacation. So yeah, so keep it as a separate account that's sort of like we're not going to touch this unless it's a true emergency. Number two, have at least three to six months worth of your emergency fund. So I kind of had a heart attack when I read that because that's a (laughs) lot of money if you think about how much you actually need. But that is what experts are recommending. So you can cover these essentials like housing, food, debt payments for at least that amount of time. But I'm going to say start with one month. Yeah. One month and then go from there. Once I have one, I'm going to go to two. That feels a lot less intimidating because sometimes Mm -hmm. if I'm like, I can't get to six months. I'm just not going to do it at all. That's my personality. So I'd rather break it down into bite-sized goals that we can focus on. And it can get pricey where you actually need it. We had a a water leak um, when we first moved into our house, and it was from our upstairs laundry room, leaked down into the walls um, and the floors. There was a socket there. And so when we called our insurance, they're like, you know, it's, it's really close to that thing. I think you guys should leave. So thank goodness we had the insurance to cover it. But, you know, looking at the bills we had to pay and then get reimbursed, Mm -hmm. we had to pay for hotel stay, you know, there's, there's seven of us. Mm -hmm. So that got really pricey, um, on top of the food because we don't have a kitchen in our hotel room. So we're eating out exactly. So three to six months, um, seems like a lot, but depending on the circumstance, that actually could be very helpful if you don't have insurance for whatever that emergency is. And I would say just specify, these are essential needs for three to six months. So if you really were in a bind, you would probably not do a lot of the extra entertainment or right. you know, eating out. So like, don't think of it as like, I need three to six months of how much money I'm earning, but how mm-hmm. much money is like the actual true cost of essentials. Yes. And we also have an emergency fund calculator that we'll link here to help you figure out a good place to start. And number three, prioritize savings. When you plan to save, a great rule to follow is the 50-30-20 rule. So 50% of your income goes towards your needs, 30% towards wants, and 20% towards savings. This makes budgeting easier when you plan to start building your emergency fund, and you can just choose how much money you want to put towards that fund as well. Next, we'll take a break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the happiness project. If you're planning a vacation for the future, you'll want to pay attention to today's future self segment. Today, I'm going to share a few of the nine ways to travel better from a U.S. news article, which we will share in our show notes. So in the last couple of years, um, I myself, I've definitely been traveling more. Um, The pandemic kind of opened me up and made me realize like, hey, I need to take time to actually make more memories with my family. And so um, a couple of the tips that were mentioned in this article, I'm like, oh, cool, I'm doing these now. And then there was a couple that was like, okay, I need to incorporate this into my future travels. So the first one on the list is to stay social. 
Now, when I first read this, I was like, okay, cool, I'm doing this. Um, one of the things that I do before a trip is I um, look to Facebook, um, Facebook groups. I've really, you know, leaned on those to give me insider tips, things to do, things not to do, um, the must-sees. If I have any questions, I'll ask the group. I've done this um, when I went to Universal Studios, um, when I went to Mexico, and right now I'm currently researching a, an upcoming cruise, so I've, I've joined these different groups. Have you ever done anything like this, Shannon? No. So you're just like a cruise, yes. Alaska cruise group. Like yes. That. Yep. Mm. And you, it gets very specific too. So if you know exactly like your destination, I am in the Alaska cruise group and people, you know, ask like, you know, what are the excursions that we should try? Or do you re- recommend um, getting a window? I heard that it gets very bright. Do I need to bring like... um one of those eye, eye protections. And, you know, they're like, no, you know, they give you all the insider mm. scoop. Like, we've done this. We're the pros. You know, check out this location. If you're doing this line, you know, this is the best month, blah, 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 blah. There are definitely cruise people. Like, yes. yes. They know all about it. So that They are in these idea. groups. Yeah. They are in there. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. So the article, though, had a different spin on it. What they said is to stay social by engaging with the hotel or the tour groups or even the airlines that you're planning to use. So connect with them on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you use. And sometimes you can get upgrades, you can get loyalty points or even free amenities. So um, they want to show that they are engaging with their guests. They want to show, you know, this is the place to be. So definitely if you know in advance, you're going to be doing one of these things. Stay social, engage with them on um, social media. So I have another tip that's kind of in line with that, but one thing I'd heard before is to read a book set in the destination you're traveling to. Oh. So if you were going to Alaska, let's say, you would find like a fiction or nonfiction book about where you're going or set in that location. And so we did a roommate trip to Hawaii several years ago, and we all read a different book based in Hawaii. And it just sort of like got us ready to go. And so we were like flying in, like I was trying to finish my book. Um, it was like a love story set on a remote island in Hawaii. And, you know, it was just a really cool story. But it was just interesting to get you into that environment. Yeah, I could see that so, because yeah. one of – it's not a book. It's a movie. But one of my, my goals um, in traveling is to go to – go to Oregon and go to where they did the Goonies. Oh, okay, um, and yeah. so like I could see myself, okay, I'm going to watch the Goonies in mm-hmm. preparation and I want to, you know, visit those destinations. So I could see the same thing with the book. Like if you read about something, you're like, okay, um, yeah. that's where they, you know, had this amazing experience. Right. I want to do this. I think this. the anticipation of a trip is often like the most fun. So you're like building that anticipation. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be at this place where mm-hmm. we're going to see this. So yeah, movies would be fun too. I like it. The next thing on the list was to learn the local language. Now, um, Shannon, I know that you um, studied abroad. Did you have to learn the language in advance? So I went somewhere that to Spain and they spoke Spanish, of course, but it was a different, they speak a different kind of version in some Mm. ways. So I'd always learned in high school and in college, I took Spanish as well. And part of my travel, I built in a language education piece because I was there for a little while. So I got Mm -hmm. to do um, Spanish classes in Spain. Oh, cool. And they just have a different accent that I think that really helped me hear it and pick up on it. So the language was kind of part of the trip, if that makes sense. Like I I built it in that way. But yeah, definitely knowing it in advance made me feel like, okay, I can a little bit confident when you're ordering whatever. Yeah. If you can learn a few key phrases in the country's native tongue, that will be helpful. Um, so you might not be able to hold like a full conversation, but if you find the bathroom, yes, exactly. All that good stuff. And that's, I did that when we went to Mexico. Um, I took Spanish too in high school, so I had a little bit of knowledge, but it was very basic, you know, Hola, como mm-hmm. esta? <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. Like, <laughs> but that little bit and then the little bit that I did in advance, I, I did a um, an audible and this, I would listen to that and repeat the phrases. Mm-hmm. So when I went there, um, a lot of people did speak English, but there was one place in particular – Funny enough, it was a Burger King. We found a Burger King out there. <laughs> we were desperate because everybody's place was um, packed up. But I was able to order from the menu because the menu was all in Spanish. So I go. was, you know, you know. I'm going to get over. Yes, yes. <laughs> so very helpful. Back on the list um, is to pack smarter. Now, even if you're taking a short trip, um, the article recommended to leave room in your carry-on or um, – whatever your your bag is, to bring back keepsakes. 
So um, I've gone on trips where, you know, I, I pack to the max <laughs> trying to stuff everything in. And then I get out there and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I want to get it back. But I'm like, well, how am I going to bring it back? So I end up with nothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you can pack in advance, leaving a little bit extra room, you can bring back those souvenirs, um, little tchotchkes that you want to bring back maybe for friends, family or yourself. Um, Shannon, I know that you travel often to like Disneyland I can imagine that being like a very keepsakey place with you yes. leave extra space we we do have a little extra space but I also just sort of tell the kids like this has to be something you wear or keep it kind of small they, okay. I think they do have a way to ship things if you order something bigger oh, but okay yeah usually we're like get a wearable souvenir the first day because then you can enjoy it at Disneyland the whole time. Smart. If you bought it like on the way out, you're like, well, now I can't wear these Mickey ears. <laughs> you know, I guess in regular life you could, but it would just be more fun to wear them. And then we do a lot of like pins or like um, the lanyards. The kids okay. Buy those, and so they're smaller, but but yeah, usually I come home with at least a couple things, and so I'll leave a little section of our suitcase. Yeah. Okay. To have room. That's smart. Smart, smart. And the last thing that we're going to share um, out of the nine is to eat like a local. Now, we, you know, we love, love food. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be the best part of traveling is to be able to ch um, sample some of the local cuisine. So skip the major chains. Don't go to Burger King, which I did. Um, but it was, again, <laughs> there was no other option. Um, what I did do, like when I was in Mexico, um, I made it a point to try the local. And so ceviche was what I was like, I'm going to I'm going to try it. We were right off the ocean um, and it was great. And now I have that memory of eating ceviche mm -hmm. in Mexico. You also get the benefit of learning more about the local culture and creating a long lasting memory over an unforgettable meal that you may experience. One thing I wanted to say, too, is like and I haven't done this yet, but I want to. We were going to do this before the pandemic ruined our plans to go abroad, but do a cooking class or something in that oh. city or culture. Like, you know, if you were in Louisiana, maybe you want to do like a Oh, like while Creole, you're out yeah, there. while you're there. Like, that take a sounds cooking fun. Class or like learn how to make tortillas if you're in Mexico or whatever. And the other thing I like to do is buy some kind of a, a spice or like a cool salt. This sounds funny, but like when we were in Hawaii with that girlfriend trip, mm -hmm. we bought um, different like there's a black salt, a pink salt, like all these different types of salts. And so then when you make something with the recipe later, you get this little like memory burst yeah. of happiness. Like, oh, this is what I bought. No, that's it's a like, great idea. So I would definitely do that. Yeah. And, and then I have one more tip. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I do this for the podcast too, but I keep a Yelp account. And so then I can bookmark restaurants and make a folder for that city, that destination. Oh. And then I'll put all the ones I've researched in advance. Like this is where I want to go. And then I can kind of favorite the ones that were really good so next time if I go back to that place I mm -hmm. can remember or if someone says to me well where did you go where did you eat like you what that you recommendation yeah but in Yelp so I really rec I recommend doing that because then I have a terrible memory and I'll be like two years later I will not remember that okay. there was a place. tree out front yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no I will remember so yeah create a little folder so you can go back and and spread the the good the good word of the places to eat great advice I will definitely do that one for sure so to all of our listeners, we encourage you to go into your vacations as informed travelers, not tourists. Open yourself up to new experiences that will leave you with rewarding, meaningful, and enriching memories. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.